So in this video, I wanted to fix a massive problem with modular dungeons in that flat stone walls alone are fairly boring and repetitive and limit our creativity while also creating some walls that give an amazing aesthetic for any sewers that you might need to lay out. Welcome to the archive. My name's Matt. This video is a follow on from my recent sewer tiles video where I use these pieces as part of some pretty epic sewer builds, making use of the adjustable height columns to change a cramped tunnel into a vast flow beneath an ancient metropolis. But they're equally useful in less disgusting environments and do a spectacular job at adding flavor to anything from devilish laboratories to the interior of ancient pyramids or the temples of lost empires before the time of men or elves. This flexibility of visuals comes from the clip-ons that I've designed to work with them, allowing you to use and reuse the core piece, but with a different feel each time and using minimal amounts of that precious resource storage space. In use, these function just like stone walls, but wider and can be used in larger rooms combined with standard stone walls to add height on the DM side, or can be used as narrow corridors using half and quarter width floor tiles and some new, more flexible stone wall options that I show later in the video. To make these core pieces, I started with these cuboids. I made mine from two stacks of one inch foam that I cut to the right size because one inch foam is often slightly thinner than it says it is. Or you could just cut these from thicker foam, which solves this problem. If you are gluing foam together, I found it best to put glue along the edges and right down the middle in a thin straight line and then cut off the bottom side, leaving the line further down. This then helps later, avoiding gluing up the line, which we may need to cut along to make bricks. With that done, there are two main ways to get the basic shape. One is by using paper printable templates. The other is by using 3D printable jigs. I've made both of these available to patrons of the channel, or you can use the measurements in the pinned comment and have a go of making your own. The first cut I did was cutting the square chunk out for the column support. I did this on all of the pieces, and you can do it using the paper template freehand by drawing it on, then following the line. For the jigs, each one has a little overlap section, which lets you line up the wire touching both sides before you start pulling it along the edge. I use the lowest temperature possible for this when cutting out corners like on the square piece. It gives you the most control and it means that if you pause briefly in the corner to let the wire catch up, it won't melt a big hole. I saved all of the little chunks that I cut out because they're kind of useful later. Once I had that cut, I cut the great hole into half of the pieces using the second jig, shifting it up and down the wire if it felt like it was getting stuck or slow and giving it a second to melt through the hot glue along the middle. This time using a higher temperature, about two, which helps to make the cut fast and smooth. Finally, I sliced all of them using the diagonal angle jig, again on the higher temperature for the smooth cut. Having them all the same angle and layout like this is what allowed me to get these STL clip-ons designed to add variety to this build with minimal extra effort or storage space. This set gives you an instant lizard folk inspired theme for a culture, but future packs I'm aiming to include all sorts of cultures, all usable with the core stone tiles too on walls and floors. You can of course make something similar by hand, though this is where I feel that 3D printing shines to assist crafting as a tool in the belt, offering precise tiny details that would take excessive time and skill to carve manually. Put it this way, I wouldn't feel comfortable carving things this detailed by hand repeatedly. And this is my full-time job. These are all Patreon throwbacks this month alongside some heavy throwbacks from other months. So if you've been holding off supporting the channel, go check these out. They're the least I can do to say thank you. Anyway, modular tricks aside, after that, it's mostly a matter of cutting bricks. I added bricks to the front of the grates using the paper template poking holes to mark them out and then cutting them in, beveling with a biro as usual. I like the effect of making the central one larger, but you do you. For the rest of the bricks, I followed a somewhat arcane method to get these varied organic looking heights. For the great pieces, you'll want to do these cuts only on the sides and then use a ruler and knife to connect them. Otherwise you'll cut over the middle with the hot wire. For the first cut, I used the hot wire to cut a line exactly along the join of the two pieces and then did two equidistant lines below that, roughly four millimeters apart. You can also use an existing piece to line these all up to the rest if you don't want to do them all at once. Then you need a line across the column hole and a line halfway between that and the first line. Finally, I did taller gaps on the upper bricks, the first one inch from the bottom and the second one and three sixteenths of an inch from the bottom, leaving five sixteenths of an inch as the top row. A quick tip on the hot wire, incidentally. If you're seeing a lot of foam buildup on the wire, it'll cut slower and potentially snap at some point, probably when you least want it to. No, right, good heavens. When I spot this sort of thing, I just loosen and run the wire a little further down. This is a lot easier than re-threading the wire if it snaps. Back to the bricks. 
I measured every half inch along this row in the middle and used that as a basis for my other cuts, cutting half inch bricks along the top of my lower rows and continuing my usual half inch brick pattern from there. The upper rows cut taller quarter inch bricks, but in the same overlapped pattern. The sides I wasn't massively precise with, I just cut half inch ish bricks where it felt about right. All of these lines got beveled with a pen. If you're a patron, you can also use the magnetic wall technique that I show in that bonus video to make these slopes magnetic along the line here. This allows agile characters to make use of the space and gives room for the clip-ons that I showed earlier. If you're not planning on supporting the channel for the STL clip-ons and you want to make your own, the connection here could also be made using cocktail stick holes pointing straight down, using a similar technique to the original wall accessories in my early videos. I textured all of these with the easy texture roller STL that I made for patrons, but you can do it with tin foil too. Just be careful with the thinner areas. I found it best to stand it up and support the back with my fingers. If it's useful to you, these rollers also have a sharper variant that is designed to work better with soft pink US foam. I'm generally trying to make crafting easier for people wherever possible. These are also in the Patreon welcome pack now, alongside the wall stamps and a basic printable wall. This is also where I added back in those column chunks that I cut out earlier. I trimmed them to one and an eighth of an inch long and cut and textured bricks into the front, sides and top before hot gluing them in place. I added hot glue only at the back and at the sides, which helps a little later on on the pieces with grates. Later on, I added a three millimeter magnet on top in the column, following the halfway brick of the column to get it centralized. And that's pretty much it for the core structure. I measured a magnet in five eighths of an inch from the right hand edge at the top to make sure that wall tiles on the interior face the right way. And for the non-grate versions, I added a three by two inch, half inch thick floor tile beneath with hot glue, after adding magnets to the front and sides, along with a brick pattern on the sides to match the upper piece. The magnets were all placed a half inch from the edge using the jig that I've shown before. That again, you can also pick up as a patron in the welcome pack. The grate pieces were slightly different, but not much so. I continued the brick lines of the arch on the inside and again cut half inch bricks for them. This is mostly not needed, but it does look nice on the lower sides if you want to save some time. But you guys look at my work through a magnifying glass sitting on my table. So, you know, I gotta do what I gotta do. The three by two inch piece is also slightly different for the great pieces. I added brickwork where it would be visible, but I designed a little piece here to make life easier. You can absolutely do this with cocktail sticks or styrene rods. I just found that they were very difficult and fiddly to keep lined up. So I designed this piece and got it made as an STL as a little bonus Patreon reward. I found it made the process much easier because I could just cut a line one and an eighth of an inch from the back at the bottom and the same distance in from the back at the top, just marking a line or two and connecting them and then widening it with a cocktail stick or sculpting tool. With this open, I could test fit it all together. This little print keeps the bars all nice and straight which I found much easier to line up than six separate holes. What I found it means is that when you hot glue down the sides, you can just slot it in and focus more on lining up the two foam pieces perfectly, rather than worrying about getting six different spikes in the right place. One other benefit of this little piece was that I was able to get Fabio to make a bent and torn version, which slots in nicely as one piece, which is a little harder to do with cocktail sticks. My final little addition to these was a piece of thin card over the back with a hole through it right at the top of the arch, small enough to fit a three millimeter LED tightly. I find an easy way to add this is to poke something through the hole and use it to feel where the roof of the arch is while attaching. This lets you use these little modular LEDs that I showed in the Wall of Fire video to add eerie lighting to a dungeon room or corridor, whether as part of a mad alchemist's lab or a demon's slaughterhouse. Now, if you're an idiot like me, you'll seal all of this up before painting. Yeah, don't do that. Paint it first, then glue the arches together, then glue the card on the back. Yeah, not particularly proud of that one. I chose to add optional columns to these because I really wanted a way to show arched ceilings without actually, you know, making a ceiling. These lower column pieces are really just extensions of that and are nice and easy to make. Literally all they are is a cuboid of foam with quarter inch bricks cut in with a hot wire and knife, just like stone walls and a three millimeter magnet in the middle at the top and bottom. Though you can use a six by two millimeter magnet on the bottom to make it stick directly to magnetic floors from my bonus videos if you wanted. You can magnetize the columns for climbing or accessories like the magnetic stone walls bonus video, but it's hardly required. The top arch is a little more complex, but only barely. A bit like the main piece, I cut these with a jig, but you could cut them with a paper template that I've made too, or just make your own template. I actually use the paper template anyway, because it helps me to cut in the brick markings and make sure that it's all evenly spaced 
easily. This then allows me to cut in the quarter inch bricks in the remaining space. Finally, I added a six by four millimeter N52 magnet on the back, one inch from the top to attach to magnetic walls and a smaller magnet on the bottom, right in the middle, facing south to line up with the other column pieces. This little magnetic armband Faye bought me for Christmas is actually kind of great if you have limited desk space or if you just don't want to leave loose magnets everywhere. This is where I added a lot more corner flexibility. But first, a quick look at the sponsor of this video, Fabio from Making Talon. Fabio is the guy who I pay to help make STLs for this channel when he's not making stuff for his Patreon like this. And if that isn't a ringing endorsement, I don't know what is. This month for only $6, he's not only doing a really cool Warhammer style open lock modular tower set perfect for Mordheim or Frostgrave that can be assembled in a ton of different ways, including plenty of highly detailed battlefield scatter terrain to go alongside them and realistically scaled objects and props to flesh out the interiors. He's also including a throwback of this epic dragon skeleton, which is an awesome set centerpiece for nearly any build, and this intricate treasure hoard, which is one of the best out there in my opinion, because the coins actually look like coins, and not thick plastic discs. This is on top of his welcome pack, which includes some animated weapons, and more interestingly to me, more modular cart variants than I thought possible, and yet all of them are somehow eminently useful. I absolutely love Fabio's work, it's why I contacted him in the first place, and I think all of you guys will too. So go check out his Patreon, or maybe even as my mini factory. Links are in the pinned comment and description. The corners of these pieces and honestly stone walls in general needed a little extra thought. For a while now, I've wanted some more flexibility in stone wall corners. Two and a half inch long walls do work, but they're highly specific. But I realized that if you make one and a half inch and one inch walls for thin corridors of half width floors like this, then you can combine the two like a Power Rangers Megazord. Or if you're super nerdy like me, the clearly superior Beetleborgs. to make two and a half inch walls whenever needed. Not only does this save time making highly specific two and a half inch walls, which only get used for one thing, you can actually double up the 1.5 inch walls as three inch walls in a pinch. And you can even do the same with three one inch walls, gaining some extra coverage for those times that you have a little gap to fill. Something the two and a half inch walls struggle to do in a visually appealing way. You can also use them for areas where you use a half length floor tile to widen a room or make a corridor and to make up the gap on top of sloped wall corners, both inside and out. I laid the magnets out on pieces like this, but they're otherwise identical to normal stone walls, including the magnetization if you followed that Patreon video. You can even still use the welcome pack stone wall brick stamp if you have it, just cut down the three inch wall to the right size bits. While we're on stone wall updates, I made these new corner columns, which are back to being the exact size of the wall that they line up with, a half inch. But the pattern mirrors real world wall corners more, just something I've been playing with that I like the results of. Your mileage may vary. Anyway, back to the sloped walls. I made these corners from three by two inch, one and a half inch high pieces with no column or grate and cut and textured them as normal, adding a layer of half inch foam beneath them with a layer of hot glue. Then I just did two 45 degree cuts to two different pieces, one at this angle and another at this angle, which then gave me four pieces, which I could combine into two pairs to make inner corners and outer corners, which makes them a nice square three inches for lining up with the floor tiles. Meanwhile, the concave corners actually work better as two inches, as that lines them up with the other pieces like this. For these corner angled cuts, I used a piece of foam that I cut separately using my little STL jig, which I found much smoother than trying to keep the actual pieces straight while using my MDF angle cutter jig. I glued it to another chunk of foam and allowed the first cut to trim the tip off. I also filled any gaps using foam putty, which is nice stuff for blending foam when it doesn't need to be too durable. Finally, you can make some one and a half inch extension pieces, mainly for the convex corners, as sometimes you'll want that little extra stretch around narrow corridors, and sometimes you won't. These are highly optional though, because you don't really need them for the basic three inch dungeon tiles or sewers. The method is identical to the three inch versions minus the column. You could even make one and just split it in two. The only difference is that each side has two front magnets for easy connection in any orientation. The rest involves some variants of existing tiles. I've already shown how to make wall and floor tiles, including magnetic upgraded methods with smaller, better scaled bricks as a patron bonus video. These half and quarter inch floor tiles are basically identical to the wood floor versions that I show how to make in a much underestimated video on magnetic scaffolds. Incidentally, I see that these scaffolds get made a lot by people, but the video still has low views. So maybe go check it out if you haven't seen it already. Apparently it's a useful build. I think the algorithm might be holding it back. Or maybe it's just not colorful enough a thumbnail. 
Point being, method identical. The only real difference being I used 3x2 magnets around the edges all the way around. I think I used bigger magnets in the scaffolding version. Oh, and obviously I textured them, like stone tiles instead of wood. With the stone floor magnetic Patreon method being deployed under the whole surface to make sure that big minis are stable on small ledges with some magnetic assistance at least. And that's it. I love these things. They add so much potential to dungeon builds and they're a powerful modular tool to create environments that feel very different, even if the underlying tiles are pretty much the same. As usual, this saves us not only a ton of materials, but also a ton of storage space. And that most precious metric of all, time. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share. And until next time, I'll be in the archive.